community members out in numbers in support of hashtag justice for Toriso. The 27-year-old was murdered on Saturday at Flora Park in Polokwane. We must assure you that indeed police have done this matter swiftly. They are going to use all available evidence so that we are able to prove whatever in court. We will know that they, will, they were in custody. We hope that the justice team, team will come up with the proper mechanism of making sure that they remain in custody. The deceased in this matter died like a sheep. The deceased was not killed by mistake. Child offenders were well aware of what they are doing. This is motivated by the fact that they kept on uttering words like uh, Big Five is committing murder and that homeboy I will kill you. You know, he aspired to, he aspired to, to impress me, to please me. I think it will take me time to forget him. Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel and thank you very much for joining me here again today. Last week we spoke about the unsolved murder case that is still ongoing that happened in George here in the Western Cape. The suspect to date has still not been found and sadly there are still no answers as to why Leslie was murdered on that night in George. But if you haven't seen that I will link it up here for you. But today we're going to talk about a case that was suggested to me, so thank you very much for your suggestions. But today's case is still quite fresh, even though it happened in 2019. The sentencing only recently just finished, now in June of 2022. So this case has been incredibly long and incredibly drawn out and must have been very hurtful and traumatizing for the families that were involved. But with that being said, and me not giving away too much, let's get into today's case. Intended for mature audiences only. Today we are heading to an area called Flora Park in Polokwane, and we are going to talk about Teresa Temane, who at the time was 28 years old. Teresa was an aspiring musician who had lived in Polokwane. The date of this incident occurred on the 23rd of February 2019. But before we get into that, Teresa was described as incredibly kind, caring, compassionate, and he had slightly older parents. His dad would describe how he would often shine his dad's church shoes before they headed out to church. He would also bring juice and pills for his dad and whatever medication he needed, as well as he would look after his mom in the same way. So the area that the attack took place is called Flora Park. But Flora Park was described as a really nice area where apparently people would run through, jog through, kids would play in the parks and people could walk around safely. So on the night of the 23rd of February 2019, Teresa was busy walking home and where this incident took place happened in like a park or an open area of felt and he was taking this route through to get home and this park or area that he was in was only around a kilometer away from where he stayed, so very close. Reports also say that this was early hours of the morning or late hours of the evening, but it was dark when this incident took place. So Teresa was busy minding his own business, he's walking through the fault at the time, when he is apparently then approached by six teenagers. These boys were said to be between the ages of 13 and 16 years old at the time of the incident and they were all from the same school and all teenage boys. There were some reports that there was a female who was also with these boys but I only read one article that indicated that there was a young female with them so this is really unconfirmed. But like we said they're all between 13 and 16 so they were all minors at the time. The boys then apparently had some sort of altercation with Terezo. This altercation then turned into to an incredibly heated argument and apparently these six boys were accusing Teresa of taking one of the boys caps like peak cap and the story behind this and the reasoning is quite blurry to say the least and we're not sure if Teresa was maybe playing with the teenage boys like he maybe pulled the cap off one of the boys put it on his head and was maybe joking around or if he genuinely did try to take the cap off one of the boys heads and take it for himself but like I said the reasoning behind this is very blurry and I do get that your property is 100% your property and it shouldn't be taken without your consent no matter the perceived value of such item but this was for a pcap and the level of violence that these teenagers took onto Teresa was absolutely heinous to say the least 
and incredibly mob-like or mob mentality-like and all for a cap. And maybe this cap was significant to the particular teenager, but like we said, it was a cap. And we don't even know if this was what the whole altercation was about because like we said, no one's confirming and no one is talking. But there were other reports that said that the altercation didn't only happen because of the cap. Apparently, both the boys, the six teenage boys, and Teresa at the time were highly intoxicated. And some reports said that the six boys and Teresa then met up, not on purpose, they just happened to cross paths. And then Teresa apparently asked them for some money, and this is how the altercation started. But like I said, very blurry. And the kids are not talking and sadly Teresa is not here to defend himself, but I'm getting ahead. So the altercation starts between the six boys and Teresa and things start to escalate quite quickly. The boys first start slapping Teresa in the face. They then start punching him. They then start hitting him. And now these are six teenage boys all hitting you at once. And yes, you might think, oh, they're only smaller than me. There's only children, but six people versus one person is a lot more. You're quite highly outnumbered. So the six boys are now all getting into this, they're now all hitting, kicking, scratching, punching, and then Teresa sadly falls to the ground, and this is where the boys see a very good opportunity. They start heavily kicking at Teresa's head, his neck, and his chest area. But this was not limited to that only. They kicked anywhere and anything that they could find of Teresa's body. And like the society that we live in today, one of the boys then pulled out their cell phones and started recording the entire incident. And not only were the boys kicking, punching, scratching, and beating Teresa, but then one of the boys also pulled out a tire iron looking object it could have been something else but it looked like the shape of a tire iron and they then started beating Teresa now with this object as well and the next part gets a bit confusing because people did start to hear the commotion that was happening outside and three adult men then approached the situation they say that they tried to pull the teenage boys off but there were so many of them they just couldn't stop them however there was a witness who was witnessing all of this, but she was too afraid to move because she was all alone and parked in a vehicle quite close to where all of this was going down. And she said that she was parked in her car. She was just about to get out when she witnessed everything. She said that she then tried to call the police once the boys started to attack Torizo. Called them. They said they were coming, but they never, ever arrived. This woman then said that she was too afraid to get out of the vehicle because she was alone. And she, and she saw what they were doing to Torizo, that she thought that this was going to happen to her as well. So she stayed put. She called the authorities and she also called an ambulance. But while all of this is going down, like I said, three grown men approached. They were all around their 30s, late 20s to early 30s. And this female witness said that no, the men didn't get out to try and help and pull the boys off. But she said one of the men did pull one of the boys aside and ask what was happening. And then she said that the three men joined in on beating Teresa. And sadly, by the time that the ambulance actually arrived, Teresa's body was left bloodied, bruised and broken on the ground. And the boys and the men were nowhere to be seen. Now, some articles do say that the video that was taken by one of the boys showed that the boys then carried and dragged Teresa to a nearby church where they left him. But I have not seen the video, so I can't confirm. But the ambulance then rushed Teresa to a hospital where sadly he would not survive the night and he would then pass away in early hours of the 24th of February, 2019. And sadly, if this case is true about the boys murdering Teresa over a pee cap, but this case is incredibly senseless and incredibly cruel. But teenagers being teenagers, they shared this video all over social media. They shared it to all their friends and they were very proud that they were now going to be notorious for beating up a man all by himself facing six against one or nine against one. But what these boys didn't realize was the pain that they were causing Teresa's family. And what they also didn't realize is that their faces were all over this video. So police quickly caught on and they quickly arrested the six boys. But sentencing took forever. Like we said, this took place in 2019, in early, like the beginning of 2019. And we have only just finished sentencing a month ago. But only two of the three adults that apparently took part in the beating and the murder of Teresa Temane. Only two of them were arrested and sentenced. Apparently, police could not find solid enough evidence to convict the third man. 
That's uh, the mayor of a 28-year-old Toriso Temani. The Polokwane Magistrates Court has heard that there wasn't enough evidence against 36-year-old Rasha Chabangu, who appeared together with 36-year-old Chwe Nemaleka and 37-year-old Alfred Mutapo. They handed themselves over to police. Six teenagers between the ages of 13 and 16 have also been arrested. A 13-year-old who also handed was also handed over to the police by his parents on Saturday is appearing has been appearing at the uh, Bolokwane Children's Court. The remaining five teenagers will appear at the same court on Wednesday. So eight people were eventually arrested and tried for the murder of Teresa Temane. And in the end, four teenagers have since been found guilty of murder, while two others were convicted of common assault after submitting a plea statement admitting to only slapping Torizo. Chuene Maleka and Alfred Mothapo were found guilty of assault with the intent to do grievous bodily harm. Now the teenagers were still tried as teenagers because when this whole incident took place they were still underage. And I'll play a clip now of the court handling and the sentencing afterwards because the lady explains it quite well. However, before we get into it, the four teenagers that were convicted of the murder of Torizo Temane were only sentenced to 10 years each for his murder and the other two teenagers who were not convicted of murder and only of slapping were given basically a slap on the wrist and they then turned state witness basically so they were not really given any sentence for their part and the two adults that were convicted of conflicting grievous bodily harm were only told to either give up 20,000 rand each to the court or to spend five years in prison. And I'm sure that they just spent the 20,000 Rand and then moved on from there, like nothing ever happened. In news just in, there's been a judgment in the Toriso Temani case earlier. Two of the minor suspects pleaded guilty to common assault, but they still maintain that they played no part in his murder. As Tell us what transpired in court. What transpired in court today in Bolugana High Court in the matter of Toriso Temani is that, that the court has divided uh, that matter in stages when giving the conviction. That, that those people who have started from stage one assaulting the disease until they left him the scene. And that those people who had just come in and just joined for a few minutes, some they tried to contact the police in order to rescue the disease and left the scene. That is why that some of some of the of the offenders were convicted with murders. And that those who have uttered words like Big Five is committing murder to show that their purpose was to kill the disease. And that those people who were saying that, oh, homeboy, I will kill you, when they were busy kicking him with, kicking him with booted feet, and some they were slapping him. And some of the, uh, of the offenders, they even hit him with the bottles of liquor. So that is why this matter was divided in those stages. But one of the most gut-wrenching parts of this is when I watched an interview with Teresa's dad, he then talks about how the Thursday before everything happened, Teresa was talking to his dad about how he really wanted a drum set and he really wanted to learn how to play the drums. And his dad couldn't afford it at the time, but he really wanted to get this for his son. And he tried really hard and he did get it. And it's just such a heartbreaking clip, Incident. I find. His dad says he's sad that his son could not enjoy the last gift he gave to him. Thursday of that week, toward that weekend, the Thursday. He came to me and said, Papa, I want, uh, I want to buy drums and uh, speakers. And I checked my account, I didn't have money. But I said, let me make this guy f happy. Let me make this guy very happy and support what he likes. And I used my credit card. I bought him. So uh, he kept them in the, in, in the box here. We collected them and then we kept them in the box here. Only, only opened them on Saturday. But the reason that so many people feel that the teenagers should have gotten a harsher sentence was that firstly they felt no remorse. They also said that they shouldn't be in prison because they just kicked him, they just smacked him. They didn't murder him. After nearly four years, the family of murdered Torisho Temani are finally going to get closure as sentencing proceedings against convicted child offenders are finalized here at the Polokwane High Court. With us today is the family member of Torisho Temani, that's his older brother, Garabo Temani. We saw some of the child offenders in court during the pre-sentencing 
processes from Monday, some of them saying that they don't feel that they belong in jail or they should be imprisoned. You know, what did you make of that? Well, that showed me that they don't have any remorse, you know. Um, they don't see that what they did was wrong. And to me, that was an insult to the life of my brother and to the family and to the community. To say that we know we caught you on camera, you were committing a crime, and then now you, you have the audacity to say um, I was not, um, I shouldn't be punished like a criminal, whereas you had exhibited uh, criminal behavior. But besides that, another witness also came forward saying that one of the four teenagers who were convicted of murder for Teresa, he said that he also had the altercation with this mob of teenagers. One community member, however, said this is not the first attack allegedly involving one of the accused. 18-year-old Vincent Thomas was stabbed allegedly by one of the accused after a short altercation at a party. Before the party started, they asked me to stand at the door because other bouncers were by the gate. So he asked me, please stand by the door and make sure no one comes and we will tell you when we're ready. Okay, so everything was said and they're like, okay, fine, you can let people in, the party's about to start. So as I was going down the stairs, he stepped on my shoe and they were pushing and kind of shoving. So then I, I looked at him and I'm like, he's stepping on me, but I was speaking to Petty. Then from there on, he looked at me, gave me an attitude and he's like, hurry. So as I wanted to approach him and talk to him, his friends stopped me and they asked, they told me, please leave him alone, but then Petty. I'm like, nah, I don't want to hit him, I want to talk to him. So he said to his friends that, leave him, I'm going to show him, but he was talking to Petty. And as we're going down the stairs, he just jumped in front of me and took out a knife, a three-star copy, and that's when I had to attack him. Because I was on top of the stairs, it was kind of like a three-set thingy, and he was down. So as soon as he jumped in front of me, took out the knife, I jumped from where I was to try and kick the knife out of his hand, and that's when he stabbed me in my chest. They're basically their friends, so they created a gang, so it's that type of thing of they want to be notorious and want to be well known. That's why they took a video of when they were busy beating the deceased. So were they really drunk? Did they really attack Teresa because of a peak cap? And did Teresa really do anything wrong? And if he did, do they really think that this is justice for what they believe that he did wrong? Nothing warrants what Teresa went through that night based on six to eight to nine people against one person. So that's the case of Teresa Tamane. Let me know what you think down below. I think this case is absolutely horrendous. And I think maybe the teenagers should have gotten a harsher sentence because they all played a role in it. Even the person filming it, he could have stopped and called the police or he could have left and told an adult, but they all took part in some shape or form. But let me know what you think down below. I hope you all have a great day and weekend further. Please stay safe out there and I'll see you again next week. Bye. Thank you.